تبارك الذي نزل الفرقان على عبده ليكون للعالمين نذيرا Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another episode of the Quranic Sira. In the previous episode, the Muslims had just arrived on the mountains of Uhud and now they prepare for battle. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam takes 50 of his best archers and places them on a mountain known as Jabal Ar-Ruma. There are mountains surrounding them protecting them from being targeted from behind and the side and the only open stretch of land is in front of them. This is from the military genius of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as this effectively diminishes the value of the surplus numbers of the Quraysh. The number of people that can be in this open stretch of land is limited to the same amount as the Muslims and the Muslims have the advantage of the archers also whereas if it was open battle it would be 4 versus 1. And now comes time for the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to rile up the troops. He takes out his sword and says, "Who will take the sword of mine and fight?" And the Sahaba begin saying, "I will, I will." And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "Who will take the sword of mine and fight and give it its right?" The Sahaba quieten down now. Abu Dujana radhiyallahu anhu says, "O messenger of Allah, and what is the sword's right?" And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "To fight with this sword until it breaks or becomes unusable." Abu Dujana says, "I will do it." He then puts on his red turban which he used to wear in the wars of the past and he marches proudly. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "Allah hates this type of walk except in times of war." And now the mubaraza begins which is the 1v1 duels before the battle. From the side of the Quraysh, Talha ibn Abi Talha, fully covered head to toe in armor, only openings are at the joints for movement. And from the side of the Muslims, Ali radhiyallahu anhu, Talha immediately begins by closing the distance and strikes with his sword. And Ali defends it with his shield and in one swift motion attacks the only exposed part of Talha's body behind the knee. Talha then drops and starts to plead for his life. Oh Ali, by the ties of kinship, I beg you not to take my life. Talha and Ali were second cousins. Their grandfathers Abdul Manaf and Abdul Daud were brothers. Ali felt remorse for him so he spared his life. The morale of the Muslims is now high and the Muslims begin fighting their way through the ranks of the Quraysh. The initial assault was devastating. It was said that Hamza, Ali and Abu Dujana radhiyallahu anhum were the most fierce in battle. They targeted the flag bearer who is from the tribe of Talha ibn Abi Talha the Banu Abdid Dar. They took out the flag bearer and someone else picked up the flag. They took him out also and they kept doing this until 10 flag bearers were killed. This served to demoralize the Quraysh. Abdullah ibn Zubayr says that Abu Dujana indeed took the sword of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and gave it its right. There was a man from the Quraysh causing difficulty for the Muslims so he made dua oh Allah let Abu Dujana meet this man. Allah answered the dua of Abdullah ibn Zubayr and Abu Dujana met him in battle and defeated him. And now we come to one of the most devastating losses at Uhud, the death of Hamza radhiyallahu anhu. A man named Jubair ibn Mutim who lost his uncle to Hamza at the battle of Badr. He instructs his slave Wahshi to kill Hamza and he'll earn his freedom. Wahshi was very skilled with the spear. So he enters the battle only targeting Hamza. Wahshi narrates to us the story in first person. He says he entered the battlefield without wanting to harm anyone except Hamza. He just wanted his freedom. He tells Hamza from behind and just as Hamza defeats someone and when he's at his most vulnerable he thrusts his spear with all his might it enters through Hamza's back and pierces his front he says that Hamza then turned to try and fight him but then collapsed and succumbed to his injuries Hind who is not yet a muslim then enters the battlefield and out of a hatred for the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mutilates the body of Hamza she cuts off his fingers and then cuts open his stomach and takes out his liver apart from this loss the muslims managed to overwhelm the quraysh and they get so far into their ranks that they can hear the women screaming and fleeing the muslims have seemingly won the battle The Quraysh have fled, nowhere to be seen. Time passes and still only the Muslims remain on the battlefield. The archers who were on top of the mountain see the Muslims collecting war booty. The archers deliberate about what they should do, and most of them leave the mountain to join in collecting the spoils. Khalid ibn Walid radhiyallahu anhu, who is not yet a Muslim, he sees now an opening and decides to circle back with the group of soldiers and blindside the Muslims and attack them from their only weak position. The Muslims were collecting spoils, so they would have been unarmed and defenseless, and Khalid begins massacring them. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the first to notice Khalid and his army. and he shouts out oh muslims behind you and allah says if tu sa'iduna wa la talwuna ala ahadin wa rasul yad'ukum fi ukhrakum fa athabakum ghamman bi ghammin likay la tahzanu likay la tahzanu ala ma fatakum wa la ma asabakum wallahu khabirun bima ta'malun allah says remember you're running away in panic and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was calling to you from behind and because you went against the order of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam this is what happened in the chaos the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was separated from the main group of muslims and he ended up with talha ibn ubaidillah and sa'ad ibn abi waqas but now that he's given away his position the army of the quraysh aimed for the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam this is the most dangerous moment in the life of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam thus far some of the sahaba try and gather and slow the quraysh only to fall one after the other talha and sa'ad begin firing volleys of arrows to slow the quraysh 
and some of the Sahaba are protecting the Prophet even with their own bodies. A man named Qatada who protects the Prophet even with his own body, taking an arrow to the face. The Prophet sustains three injuries. The enemy begin throwing rocks and firing arrows and a rock hits the face of the Prophet and his helmet pierces his cheek. An arrow also pierced the other cheek of the Prophet and got stuck in his teeth. And one Quraysh got so close to the Prophet and struck with his sword but Talha managed to defend with his shield but the impact was felt by the Prophet During this time Musab ibn Umair was also killed. He was the one that the Prophet first sent to Medina and through him Islam spread there. But Musab who was the flag bearer, they cut off his right and they held the flag with his left. They cut off his left and then he held the flag with whatever he could left of his arms. Musab very closely resembled the Prophet and as they were wearing helmets, it wasn't very clear to see. So they thought they killed the Prophet when Musab died. Word then spreads amongst the Quraysh that the Prophet has been killed, which leads to them leaving the battlefield. Abu Bakr and Abu Baydah find the Prophet and tend to his injuries. Abu Sufyan then calls out, Is Muhammad alive? The Prophet tells them not to respond. He then calls out, Is Abu Bakr alive? No response. Is Umar alive? No response. He then celebrates and says, We've killed them all. Umar al couldn't hold himself back at this point. He then responds by saying, We are alive, O enemy of Allah, and will return to harm you another day. Abu Sufyan says, This for Badr. Now that the battle is over, the Muslims now begin burying their dead. The Prophet happens to see Hamza and he is overcome by grief. He says, For this I shall mutilate 30 of them. Allah then responds by saying, Allah says, if you're going to retaliate, then let it be equivalent, one for one. But if you're patient, that's better. Nabi Sallallahu then sees the body of Hanzala being washed by the angels, but the body of the martyrs isn't washed. So what happened here? It turns out that Hanzala was newly married and he'd just been intimate with his wife. Then the call to battle came and he didn't even have time to have a bath, so the angels washed his body. The Prophet Sallallahu then issues a command, let the people that know the most Quran be buried first. Allah Akbar, the people of Quran are honored in life and in death. He then uplifts the Sahaba by making dua for the Shuhada, the martyrs, and saying he will testify for them. To summarize, the Sahaba made a grave mistake in this battle which led to many of the Muslims being killed. But Allah still chose to forgive them. So never think you are too far to earn Allah's forgiveness. And to further reinforce the mercy of Allah, he guided Hind and Wahshi later. And as we know, accepting Islam wipes out all of the previous mistakes. That's all for this episode. See you in the next one. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. If you enjoyed this video, why don't you consider subscribing? Leave a like, comment down below and share. Jazakumullah khair.